This interactive demo of Agile Management with CA Clarity PPM is the fifth of a comprehensive series of demonstrations presented by Digital Celerity, a premier CA Technologies partner and the leading provider of Clarity Consulting, Training, and Expert Services. As the number one reseller of CA Clarity PPM in North America, Digital Celerity is delighted to share our knowledge, exchange ideas, and build the CA Clarity PPM community. Hi, thanks for joining this morning and offering to show us the, the Agile side of Clarity. As you know, many of our projects are managed in an Agile way. I know we need to create a backlog of user stories and issues that need to be analyzed and prioritized. We then need to schedule the highest priority user stories or issues into two-week sprints. In the sprint, the stories need to be assigned to story points so that we can see the relative size of each story. Then the stories must be broken down into component tasks. Each task needs to be assigned to one or more team members to work on. And in the sprint, we want to manage the burn down of story points and hours. At the moment, we do this all manually um, with post-its and uh, spreadsheets. But can you show us how Clarity can handle these uh, backlogs, the sprint charts, and how it can generally manage agile projects? Yes, I'd be glad to do that. Thanks, Chris, for the question. Um, basically, what we're going to show you here is the backlog creation process within Clarity Agile and how you can very easily change the ranking of the stories within the backlog, assign them to sprints. And then we'll take a look at the sprints and show you how we put the stories into the sprints, add tasks to those stories, and then assign people to the tasks. So as you see here, this view is a ranked view of the stories in the backlog. And you can see here, this is the rank column. I can add e very quickly and easily change the ranking by sele selecting a row and moving it around so that in the product meetings, the users can very quickly rearrange the order of the uh, items in the backlog. You see here also several different fields that uh, can give information about those stories, such as the priority, uh, the status of each of the, the um, stories, uh, what sprint it belongs to, uh, and release. And this is where I can actually go in and assign it to specific uh, sprints. I can go in to a particular story, see this story here, and say I want to add this story to a, a sprint. I'm going to add it to sprint 11, so I think it should fit there. So I can successively go down each of the stories and add them to specific sprints. So once I've done my backlog review, I can go in to the sprint backlog and charts. I'll leave my page there. And I'm going to see a specific sprint that I've set up for this particular uh, product uh, and release. And you see here, this is a product, web-based trading. It belongs to the release WBT 2013 for the fall, and it's part of Sprint 13. Um, I'm doing this for all of my teams. I can actually do this for specific teams if I wanted to. I can see here that these are the stories that I've selected to go into the um, particular uh, sprint, and I can go in and um, you know assign uh, different tasks to this particular um, story. So here I'm looking at this um, story, and I'm going to create a new task. And then to new task is just going to call it new task. And in, in here, I can put the status, uh, the owner for the task. I'm going to pick someone as an owner for that particular task, Paul Martin. Uh, I can pick a team for that task, uh, estimated number of hours. I'm going to say this one takes uh, five hours worth of work. And I'm going to hit Save and Return. And you'll see this task now gets added into the uh, list of tasks within the, um, that story. So I pull this open, and I see here that that new task that I just um, added is now part of the, uh, the story itself. If I want to, I can actually go into the story and uh, start adding in uh, more details about that particular story as well.
Oh, that's great. Um, what about some of the burn down and allocation charts and dashboards I'm seeing? Well, sure. Can you explain those to me on what I'm seeing on the screen there? Certainly can, yeah. Let me, let me go back to that page. So what you're seeing on this page is a, a burn down chart that you can use to show how you're progressing on your um, progress on your sprint. Um, the first one on the left here is by hours and the second one is by points. And it basically says that when you start the um, for, um, sprint out, you've got um, this number here, the, the up, uh, almost a thousand uh, hours worth of uh, effort to be to complete the sprint. Um, shows you the hours remaining, the hours completed. We're very early into the sprint, um, so there are very few hours uh, completed. Um, yeah, yeah, and then it shows you a guideline. How how you should you be progressing on this particular sprint? In a similar way, we've got this uh, points view that says this is the num total number of points for the particular um, stories within the sprint. And you can see the burn down here of those uh, stories um, through time. And then you can, as, as you complete the stories, you'll see um, how you're doing compared to what your, your plan was. That's great. Thanks, Alan. Um, so now that the sprint organized, we need a way to use the sprint information to facilitate a daily stand-up. In the stand-up, we currently use sticky notes to depict the tasks in each story. We review the tasks to see how we're progressing and what the status is, what we have planned to accomplish, and if there's any issues. We also manage several of our Agile projects using a Kanban board. Can you show us how we, we can see the progress and other information from those Agile projects in clarity rather than what we use right now? Yes, I'd certainly be glad to do that. Um, I can use a couple of methods here to look at uh, the um, information in the sprint and use it as a way to facilitate uh, a stand-up meeting every day. The first one is called our virtual wall. The virtual wall does use the sticky note uh, process to capture information associated with the stories and, and the tasks. And you'll see here, um, again, this is the, the product and release that we were looking at before, the Sprint 13, and all of the teams. And each row here represents this, a story, the different phases within the story, such as whether the tasks are planned, in progress, or closed. And each of the sticky notes represents a task that needs to be accomplished to complete the story. Um, so people use this as a way to facilitate their stand-up meetings to review uh, the activities that are in progress, the ones that plan need to be planned. Um, each person would stand up and just give a quick overview of their particular tasks. And a nice thing with this, it's just like a virtual wall. You can actually move a task from one column to the next, and you can see the, the progress uh, in a virtual way. So it's a very nice way to emulate uh, the, the sticky notes that people use in their manual process now with the automated data that you have um, already entered and everybody's seeing within the system. So that is for the um, sprint information. The other one is the Kanban board, which allows you to go in and see um, stories uh, for a particular product and release. Um, in, a, in a Kanban view. The Kanban view basically um, is for a specific product release, and it tracks the progress of the stories through the phases of the story. And it uses the Kanban technique that says, if a particular uh, phase has got too many uh, items in it, it can accept any more um, items in there. In this particular case, the items are stories. And as you can see here, we are only allowed to have three planned stories in, in, the, um, in that phase, and we've actually added four. So it, it throws us an, uh, a kind of warning 
limit that says we've actually exceeded the whip limit of three. And that uh, is a, a technique from Lean that enables you to um, make sure that you don't overload your systems and you get bottlenecks. And people use that quite effectively within the Agile community. Yeah, Alan, that's great. So now I can see how we can automate you know, a lot of the work that we're doing manually. Okay, thanks, Alan. Now I can see how Clarity can easily be used to manage my Agile projects um, alongside all the other projects in my portfolios. You know, if we wanted to look at the maturity and the adoption of our processes and tools, not just across Agile, but across other disciplines such as resource management, finance management, portfolios, other areas of project management. So we're looking to put more automation into those capabilities. Would you be able to help us there? Oh, yes, we'd, we'd definitely be able to, to help you with that process. We, we have a series of um, assessments that allow you to, to see very objectively where you are on your portfolio management, your program management, and your project management. And then also, from the Agile perspective, where are you in terms of the processes that you are working with as well? We can also help to automate some of the uh, connectivity between some of the other tools that people would use uh, from an Agile perspective if you were to choose that. Okay, thanks. Um, look forward to seeing some of the other demonstrations because this has certainly whet my appetite, so I'd like to see some uh, demonstrations of other clarity capabilities, you know, such as resource management and finance management as well. So uh, thank you very much for that demonstration. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Digital Celerity, guiding your best path to PPM, ITSM, and Enterprise Agile best practices.